This video is for anyone who missed the penny lab or maybe needs a little bit of additional help because their measurements weren't um, correct or something like that. Um, so in our penny lab, the basic gist of it is that we took 10 pennies with a date of after 1984 or 1984 or later, um, and we took the mass and volume of the original pennies, so just a stack of pennies like what's in our little picture here, and then we um, melted the inside of the pennies, so the metal on the inside of these pennies um, is able to melt before the copper coating on the penny, and then we flicked that um, metal out. So I have a video of that, um, and we took the resulting metal and took the mass and volume of that. So I'll go through all the measurements, that way you have actual data to work with, and then you can do the analysis questions on your own as I kind of talk through it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and play the video, but before we do that, I'll go ahead, I'll um, scroll in on this, that way you can see kind of where you're supposed to mark this stuff. So you should have this paper from me, if not, it is also linked in Empower. Um, the first thing we did, so step one says use the scale to determine the mass of all 10 pennies. The mass that we got of our 10 pennies was 25.10. Um, for any students who did this in class, you might have gotten a slightly different mass, but 25.10 should be your mass there. And then um, we took our initial volume, so that's kind of what's happening in this. If I go back just a little bit, um, you can see the student is taking the oops, initial and final volume of um, the pennies in the graduated cylinder. So the, um, I'll pause the video there. So the initial volume that we had in our graduated cylinder was 70.0 milliliters. Um, because the graduated cylinder was marked to every one's place, um, we estimate one place past that point of measure, so 70.0, and then our final volume was 73, so that go on this part, oops, can't see this, I'll put this up. Um, so initial volume up here would have been 70.0, and then final volume 73.2. And then using those volumes, and I put pictures on the second version of the lab that I posted, um, but if you have the original one from day one of the lab, yours may or may not have pictures, but the questions are all the same, the steps are the same. So you take your final volume, whichever one is higher, the one that has the pennies and the water in it, and then you subtract your initial volume, and that gives you the volume of just the pennies on their own. Um, so that is the volume that you're going to transfer into the box over here and put um, in that section. So I'll let you do the calculating with those two numbers. So I'm not going to give you that answer for this one. Um, and then with all of that, you're going to use the mass and use the volume that you got um, from steps one through three or one through four, and then you're going to calculate your den density. So for the density of the pennies, you need to use the mass of the pennies and the volume of the pennies. You're not going to use the volume of the water that you got because that's just telling you how much water was in your graduated cylinder and it could be different for everyone. Um, but the density of the pennies for each lab group who did this should be pretty similar. So let's go ahead and play the video again. I'll hide my source. So this is basically when we were going through and melting the inside of the pennies. So like I said at the beginning, um, the copper coating on the outside of the pennies will not melt. Um, if you are looking in your lab and you refer to um, the table on the bottom right of the front page, that table has the melting point of copper listed. I'll pull that up right now. So it was um, 1,083 degrees Celsius, so that's super, super, super hot, and the copper is not melting. Um, so you can see the student is holding um, mm. the penny at the tip of the inner blue cone in the flame of the Bunsen burner. That's, that's the hottest point, and once it gets to a good, um, a good point and it's melted enough, he can flick that metal outside of the penny um, and into this beaker of water. So what he's doing now is kind of trying to flick the rest of it into there, kind of made a little bit of a mess. Um, and then you can see that when he dips the tongs into the water, um, it sizzles because it's super hot. So let's watch just a couple more. I tried to d get decent angles um, so that you could actually see the penny starting to change. So, okay, there we go. So you can sort of see what's happening a little bit. I know the video is sped up. Um, the process took quite a while, so I didn't want to have too, too long of a video. Um, but then you can also see on the table there between the Bunsen burner and the beaker, you can see that um, little bit of silver metal that made it onto the table. That's what we're collecting in the beaker, as well as the copper shells of the pennies. So he flicks it, good. You can see it kind of collecting down there. And then eventually what we do is 
we'll dump out that water and collect all of the metal pieces, separating out the copper shells from the silver metal, silver metal that was on the inside. So that silver metal is the unknown metal that I refer to on the back page. So on the back page of the lab, um, we're working with only the silver metal pieces that came out of it, came out of the pennies. And so we'll see if I got any of that. I think I stopped the video beforehand. Okay, so we'll go back to our lab picture and I'll kind of work through it like this. So on the back page of the lab, um, I'll scroll it out a little bit. So what are we doing? Okay. So what we, sorry about this. Okay. Scrolling on the back, um, number 10 says use the scale to determine the mass of the unknown metal. Where is that? Down here. Go, go, go. Sorry, I, my screens are not communicating well. There we go. Okay, 10, use the scale to determine the mass of the unknown metal. So with that, um, our unknown metal weighed 12.76 um, grams. So 12.76 was the mass of our unknown metal for number 10. Um, the volume in the graduated cylinder before we added the unknown metal. So our initial volume um, in the graduated cylinder was 52.4 milliliters. So that was just a random amount that we put in there. And then after adding the amount of unknown metal that we were able to obtain, it was 54.1 milliliters. So that was the volume after adding the unknown metal for number 12. So again, number 11 was 52.4, number 12 was 54.1. And then for number 13, I'm having you calculate again, just like we did on the front page, where you're gonna take your final volume of 54.1, subtract our initial volume of 52.4, and that gives you the volume of just the metal. So that's going to be the answer that you put on the line for number 13. And then using for the density of the metal, again, we want to keep in mind that if we're calculating the density of the metal, we need to use the mass of the metal and the volume of the metal, um, not the volumes of the water because that's not what we're concerned with. So we're going to do those calculations. I'll leave that for you to do. Make sure that you're showing me your work the whole time. Um, and then use this information in conjunction with um, this chart on, oops, not there. Sorry, I'm having a hard time making my screens talk to each other. Okay, um, using this table, you're going to use all of the information that we talked about um, to come to the conclusion of what metal doesn't make sense that's inside of the penny.